In this video, we're going to talk about conditional probability, really important probability concept. Imagine that we have a bad darts player throwing a dart at this board. Let P of E be the probability that their dart lands within the circle E. One imagines that since E doesn't take up much of the board and our player is basically throwing their dart randomly, they're going to be less likely to hit within E because it doesn't take up that much of the board. Okay, so suppose instead that we have a more competent darts player who is guaranteed to always throw within the green quadrilateral F. Because E is larger relative to F, that means that our player is more likely to hit E than the first player is. Um, even though they're never going to hit the upper sliver of the circle, E is still larger relative to F than it is to the board, so the probability that our second player hits E is more likely, or is higher than the probability that the first player hits E. That example motivates this definition. Let E and F both be subsets of omega, and let F be non-empty, so F has to have something in it. The conditional probability of E given F, in other words, the probability that E occurs given that we know F occurs, is denoted by P of E given F equals the cardinality of E and F divided by the cardinality of F. All right, well, we can take that expression and we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by omega if we want, right? There's nothing wrong with that. As long as our universe is non-empty, we can divide by it on both the numerator and the denominator. And when we do that, oh, that shouldn't have had, there we go. That gives us the probability of E and F divided by the probability of F. So that's another way that we can write this uh, conditional probability. That middle line is pronounced given. It is not a division symbol, it is pronounced given. Uh, and when we calculate a conditional probability, you can imagine that we replace the sample space omega with a smaller sample space f, where the probability of e might go up or go down. All right, here's an example. What is the probability that a bit string of length five contains two ones given that it ends on a zero? All right, so we've got a bit string of length five, one, two, three, four, five, and we know that it ends on a zero. So we wanna calculate the probability that we contain two ones given that we end on a zero. So we need to count the number of bit strings of length five that end on a zero. And that will be the denominator for the number of bit strings that end on a zero and contain two ones. All right, well, if the bit string ends on a zero, that means I've got two choices for my first character, I've got two choices for my second character, I've got two choices for my third character, two choices for my fourth character, but I've only got one choice for my fifth character because it has to be that zero. So the denominator is going to be two to the four, or 16. There are 16 total bit strings of length five that end on a zero. All right, and we know that if I've got to choose two of them to be ones, uh, then I'm gonna use a binomial coefficient to calculate that. Uh, I've only got four characters to choose from, so the numerator is going to be four choose two. And we remember that four choose two is six. So the answer to this question is six over 16.